What is up? Welcome to the Mana Crypt, your channel for all things Commander, where we build fun, strong, weird and all other kinds of decks for our favorite casual format. My name is Julian and let's jump right into it. C20 gave us a bunch of new commanders and one of them is Cyrus the Rising Storm. Cyrus is a legendary 3-5 snake leviathan creature with flying that costs 2 blue, red and green and says whenever an opponent draws a card except the first one they draw on each of their draw steps, create a 1-1 one -one green snake creature token. Whenever Cyrus, the rising storm, deals combat damage to a player, you and that player each draw that many cards. So what immediately comes to mind is a deck that abuses several draw 7 effects, also named wheels, to create a humongous amount of snake tokens and overpower our opponents. Please keep in mind that this is how I personally would build the deck, it is by no means the most competitive or most fun way to build it. This deck uses some expensive cards but if you don't want to spend hundreds of dollars, fear not. At the end of this video I will show you some budget alternatives that still let you play the deck the way I present it to you. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. But now let's move on to the deck tech. First of all, we have the RAM cards. RAM is one of the most important aspects of Commander because you have 3 opponents and you really want to start doing big stuff before they do. Usually you want to play between 10 and 20 RAM cards. In this deck I opted to play 17 because we're drawing a lot of cards and want to deploy them quickly. First of all we have Soul Ring, Mana Crypt, Mox Diamond and Chromox. These are some of the best mana producing cards in the game so we want all of them. Next up is Burgeoning which is an enchantment for green that lets you put a land card on the battlefield from your hand every time an opponent plays a land. Because we are refilling our opponent's hands a lot, Burgeoning will cheat plenty of lands into play. Then we have Lanoa Elves, Birds of Paradise and Utopia Sprawl at 1 mana and Rattleclaw Mystic, Sylvan Carrier Tit and Paradise Druid at 2 mana. They all tap for mana and give us a head start into the game. Orochi Sustainer, Sakura Tribella and Lotus Cobra generate mana and are snakes which is an important creature type for this deck. The last cards are Farseek, Nature's Law and Rampant Grove. They search our library for land cards and put them directly into play. Nature's Law and Farseek even get you dual lands like Breeding Pool which makes them great mana fixing in addition to ramp. The Wheels First the OG, Wheel of Fortune, the original wheel card from Alpha, costs 2 and a red, sorcery and each player discards his or her hand and draws 7 cards. This is the main engine of our deck. Each of the wheels will give everyone 7 or more cards and create 21 plus snake tokens for us if we have Cyrus on the battlefield. From there we hope none of our opponents drew a mass removal and we should be able to win the game pretty easily. Reforge's Soul is exactly the same card except it costs 5 or 2 when we miracle it if it's the first card we draw in a turn. Windfall is a blue take on Wheel of Fortune but it makes everyone draw cards equal to the greatest number of cards the player has discarded with it. This can draw more than 7 cards, for example if you cast it after Cyrus attack an opponent. Then we have Time Twister. It along with Wheel of Fortune was printed in the very first set of Magic, Alpha. It is also part of the Power 9, some of the strongest cards in Magic history and if you own it you want to include it in this deck. It is similar to Wheel, but instead of discarding the hand, each player shuffles all cards in their hand, graveyard and library into their deck and then draws 7. We also include the weaker but still very potent clones of Time Twister, Time Reversal, Echo of Eons and the maybe strongest wheel of all, Time Spiral, which lets us untap up to 6 lands after we drew a fresh 7. Another kind of wheel effect is Memory Jar. It is an artifact for 5 that reads, tap, sacrifice memory jar, each player exiles all cards from his or her hand face down and draws 7 cards. At the beginning of the next end step, each player discards his or her hand and returns to his or her hand each card he or she exiled this way. The last 2 cards we play are not exactly wheels, but they accomplish the same thing. Burning Inquiry makes everyone draw 3 cards and then discard 3 cards at random. 9 snakes for a single red mana is still a very good deal, but sometimes a random discard can ruin your hand, but also your opponent's hands. Prosperity costs blue and X and says each player draws X cards. We have some very strong mana engines in this deck and that allows us to create way more snakes than a wheel effect ever could. And then there's wheel and deal. It's an instant for 3 and a blue that makes any number of opponents draw 7 and lets you draw 1. Now we take a look at the win conditions. We don't win the game by just drawing a ton of cards. Usually our opponents will find ways to handle the snake tokens we are creating so we need some real win conditions. Ashnod's Altar and Phyrexian Altar are both CMC3 artifacts that let us sacrifice creatures for mana and they are the most powerful engine cards in this deck. Basically casting a single wheel effect with Cyrus in play gives us enough mana to do whatever we want. Especially with Phyrexian Altar we can chain as many wheels as we draw because it produces colored mana unlike Ashnod's Altar. Impact Tremors, Warstorm Surge and Perforous, God of the Forge all the damage to our opponents every time a creature enters the battlefield under our control. That means we need 2 wheels to kill at least 1 player at the table in case of Warstorm Surge or all opponents with one of the other two. These are the best win conditions in our deck and they make winning pretty easy. 
Goblin Bombardment is slightly worse than the other three, but still a very solid way of dealing tons of damage. It's an enchantment for one and a red and says, sacrifice a creature, Goblin Bombardment deals one damage to target, creature or player. It also pairs well with Outpost Siege, which is also an enchantment. It costs three and a red and lets you choose cards or dragons as it enters the battlefield, but usually you want to choose dragons. Dragon says, whenever a creature you control leaves the battlefield, Outpost Siege deals one damage to target, creature or player. So this in combination with Mock Bombardment will also one-shot any player on the table. It is also kind of a wrath protection or rather a wrath punishment because no one wants to take 21 to the face. Sometimes winning the unfair way doesn't work because the opponents destroy one of our enchantments so we need another way to win games. So here are our alternate win conditions. Ogre Battle Driver is a 3-3 creature for 2 and 2 reds and says, whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, that creature gets plus 2 plus 0 and gets haste until end of turn. So when we cast the wheel with this guy on the battlefield, we create 21-3-1 hasty snakes. Beastmaster Ascension is an enchantment for 2 in the green that gets a quest counter whenever a creature we control attacks. As long as there are 5 or more quest counters on Beastmaster Ascension, creatures you control get plus 5 plus 5. Shared Animosity is an enchantment for 2 in red, and whenever a creature you control attacks, it gets plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn for each other attacking creature that shares a creature type with it. Attacking just once with an army of 21 snakes will make them so gigantic that nobody should be able to survive. Kretterhoof Behemoth is a 5 of haste creature for 5 and 3 green that gives all of our creatures plus x plus x and trample until end of turn where x is the number of creatures we control. And at last, a personal favorite of mine. I'm a huge Kamigawa fan so I always try to sneak in some cool legends from that block into my decks. Sashiro the Anointed is a legendary snake monk who is shooting two bows simultaneously which is like super sick. He costs 4 and 2 green as a 3-4, gives all our snakes plus 2 plus 2 and whenever a snake we control deals damage to a player, lets us draw a card. He's a little bit overkill, but he presents a serious clock and helps us recovering after a board wipe. Card selection. Skullclamp is a great card in his deck. It's an equipment that costs 1 and equips for 1. It gives equipped creature plus 1 minus 1 and whenever a equipped creature dies, draw 2 cards. This deck produces more tokens than any other deck in Magic, so Skullclamp will draw us a ton of cards. Trinket Mage is in my opinion the best blue card in Commander, as it fetches cards like Mana Crypt, Soul Ring or Skullclamp, which oftentimes are the best cards in your deck. Drift of Phantasm searches our deck for a card with converted mana cost 3 and puts it into our hand. This most likely will find a wheel or a Phyrexian altar. Gamble searches for any card, but we have to discard a card at random, so it's a little bit risky. Use it when you have a lot of cards in your hand to decrease the chance of discarding what you tutored for. Mystical and Personal Tutor put an instant or sorcery card from your deck on top of it, but you have to wait a turn until you get them. A way to get around that is playing them before you attack with Zyrus, so you can draw the card immediately. Drawn from Names costs 2 and 2 blue, looks at the top 7 cards for our library and lets us keep 2 of them while putting the other ones to the bottom of the library. I choose to run this card over Dick through time because a lot of the wheels shuffle the cards from our graveyard back into the deck so we can't abuse the death ability. Finally we have Brainstorm and Sylvan Library. Brainstorm says draw 3 cards and then put 2 cards from your hand on top of your library in any order and Sylvan Library says at the beginning of your draw step you may draw 2 additional cards. If you do, choose 2 cards in your hand drawn this turn. For each of those cards, pay 4 life or put these cards on top of your library. These cards work very well with fetch lands to shuffle cards you do not want away. The next cards we are looking at are the counter spells. Because we're tapping out a lot to cast draw 7s, we want some free counter magic. Force of Will and Force of Negation both require you to exile a blue card from your hand in order to cast him for 0 mana. We almost always will have spare blue cards in our hands so they work perfectly in our deck. Luckily C20 gave us another really good free counter spell in Fierce Guardianship. We need our commander in play to cast it for free but our deck is built exclusively around our commander so that should not be a problem. Mana Drain is an instant for 2 blue that reads, counter target spell at the beginning of your next main phase add an amount of mana to your mana pool equal to that spell's converted mana cost. It is the most powerful counter spell in magic and if you own one there is no reason to not play it. A counter spell that works quite well with our commander is Arcane Denial. It costs 1 and a blue and says counter target spell. Its controller may draw up to 2 cards at the beginning of the next turn's upkeep. You draw a card at the beginning of the next turn's upkeep. Though it is card disadvantage, it is easy to cast and gives us 2 snake tokens with our commander out. The last two counter spells are Negate and Disdainful Stroke. Negate counters a non-creature spell and Disdainful Stroke counters any spell that costs 4 or more. Because Commander revolves around casting big game-changing instants and sorceries, those two are the perfect answers. The last category are cards that don't really fit into the other categories. They offer some utility and answers to problems you might face. Reclamation Sage gets rid of any annoying enchantment or artifact. Beast Within kills anything but gives the owner a 3-3 beast. Cyclonic Rift, when overloaded, returns all online permanents your opponents control to their hands. Heroic Intervention makes your team indestructible. Kaseto Orochi Archmage makes Cyrus unblockable, while Lightning Greaves give him haste and shroud.
Now that we went through every single non-land card, I go through the land base real quick. Gaia's Cradle generates you green mana for every creature we control, so this is obviously extremely strong in this deck. Kethic Wolfram pairs well with it or one of the altars, as it gives a creature plus X plus O and trample for X mana. Cavern of Souls makes the creature of the type we choose uncounterable when you use its mana to play it. Making Sashiro or Zyrus uncounterable sounds pretty good. And for the rest, we have the original dual lands, Taiga, Tropical Island and Volcanic Island. The Shocklands, Breeding Pool, Stomping Ground and Steam Vents. The Painlands, Carpus and Forest, Yavimaya Coast and Shivered Reef. The Fetchlands, Wooded Foothills, Misty Rainforest, Scalding Tarn, Bloodstained Maya, Flooded Strand, Polluted Delta, Windswept Heath, Arid Mesa, Hurden Catacombs and Canopy Vista. The Rainbowlands, Reflecting Pool, Command Tower, Catria Triome, Mana Confluence, City of Brass and Tarnished Citadel, as well as Temple of Mystery, Temple of Abandon, Ancient Tomb, Rupon Crag, Hinterland Harbor, One Island, One Mountain and Two Forests. That's the deck, if you don't own some of the expensive cards or simply want to power the deck down a little bit to play with your playgroup, here are some budget alternatives. Mana Group becomes Thought Vessel, Mox Diamond becomes Arcane Signet, Chromox becomes Talisman of Curiosity, Craterhoof Behemoth becomes Overrun, Shared Animosity becomes Coat of Arms, Phyrexian Altar becomes Perilius for Rays. And keep in mind Forays searches for basic land types, not for basic lands, so it can search for dual lands. Perforos becomes Panemonium, Sylvan Library becomes Harmonize, Cyclonic Griff becomes Whelming Wave, Force of Will becomes Foil, Force of Negation becomes Unified Will, Mana Drain becomes Counterspell, Time Spell becomes Diminishing Returns, Time Twister becomes Comet Memory, Memory Jar becomes Molten Psyche, and Wheel of Fortune becomes Margus of the Wheel. Then we exchange Gaia's Cradle for Forest, Cavern of Souls for Unclaimed Territory, the OG Duels for Sheltered Thicket, Frontier Bivouac, I hope I didn't slaughter that name, and a Forest, and a Fetchlands plus Prismatic Vista for Evolving Wilds, Terramorphic Expanse, Myriad Landscape, 4 Forests, 2 Islands and a Mountain. Please let me know in the comments if you like this kind of video where I show you a powerful and expensive deck with budget alternatives or if you'd rather see entire budget deck tags. I'm also curious if there are cards I didn't think of and you feel would be great inclusions for this deck. If you like this video, like, subscribe, comment below and see you next time.